What is up, everybody? Lindy Enzone is back with another video today, and this will be my third uh, mock draft in the series. Um, some of you may have a hint as to um, who it's going to be um, highlighted for as who's the headliner of this mock draft. Um, a couple of quick nuggets with this one. I, it actually took me seven attempts to um, get uh, to get this guy to get this guy at number six because the Miami Dolphins decided to keep taking him at number three um, until um, in this mock they actually they actually may have reached a little bit and they took Najee Harris with the third overall so I was lucky for this guy to fall into my lap at six while others were still on the board but for the sake of this video and for the sake of the third mock draft in this series that I, you know, that I promised that I would have him as the headliner. Um, this is the Jamar Chase edition of my Eagles mock draft series. And before we get into it, if you, you know, like I said, like I've said in my previous videos and my live streams, if you like the content, let me know how I'm, let me know how I'm doing. Drop your opinions down in the comments. You know, leave leave me a like. Hit that subscribe button if if I'm up to if I'm up to the standard and if you like the content enough. So <laughs> let's let's get into it. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and be a little quicker with this one. Um, I understand that uh, my other two mocks were a little bit longer, so I'm gonna try and get through this a little quicker for you guys. So um, obviously with the sixth pick, it took me seven attempts to get this one. Like I said. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know what it was with the Miami Dolphins, but you know it. That pick still makes that pick still makes sense to them. Give them a, um, you know, you're giving to us some help, and um, you want to partner for the you want to partner for Devontae Parker. So, um, but this time I was able to get Jamar Chase. Um, you know, we are we already know the deal with him. Um, you know, a lot of us Eagles fans realize that um, you know Philly is. Philly's missing a true X receiver right now. You know, J.J. Ortega Whiteside doesn't cut it. You know, Alshon Jeffrey hasn't cut it the last two years, and so we're we're kind of we're kind of desperate for that kind of over the top for that you know for that over the top um, goes for the you know goes for those passes that kind of player. So we're gonna start this one off with taking Jamar Chase, and personally. This may be my favorite mock so far because the first four picks, in my opinion, I think I definitely hit on, and they're going, um, you know, and I and I feel that these guys are going to make either um, an immediate impact, or um, it's not going to take them much long to, um, you know, for them to be, um, for them for them just to. Um, Man, and I just I just hit a mental block quick, but I don't think they're I don't think it's going to uh, take them long to um, see the field on first string, or if it's a, a rotational guy. So um, at the thirty seventh pick, I lucked out with this one. Uh, he was he was towards the top of the board in rankings, and he was still available. We talk about we talk about. Um, improving the secondary. So with the 37th pick, I was able to take Eric Stokes, the cornerback out of Georgia. I know for a lot of you guys, and it's it's a battle, uh, it's a battle between him and J.C. Horn. So if we can't get one, we're going to settle with another. Um, yeah, I, I was lucky enough to get him um, at 70. I was able to take a linebacker. Um, he's he's a little bit different. Um, in opportunity wise as opposed to um, in the in the third round when we took um, when we took Davion Taylor in my opinion that was kind of a wasted pick because we're talking about a guy that's you know that's only really played college football for for about two years he's still he's still very raw there's you know there's a lot of fundamentals and nuances that you know that this coaching staff has to figure out with him the you know like and and I think that's and I think this is part of a fault with um, you know some of um, you know some of Jim Schwartz's thought process like he 
he was he was about he was about getting athletes and if we know if we know Nick Sirianni so far he's he's trying to um, he's trying to project the message of wanting to build a team that is um, you know that he focuses on intelligence with the players and that they just have a high um, passion for the game of football so um, I feel that the linebacker out of Ohio State, Pete Warner, can be one of those guys. Um, he's a he's a good um, he's a good Sam linebacker. Um, I know that we've had issues with some of our guys on the roster right now um, that really can't contain tight ends. So, um, as far as Pete Warner goes, he's um, he's collectively sound and. You know, when we when we talk about in comparison between him and Davion Taylor, he's more fit to be picked this high than Davion was. So um, taking two defensive players back to back between the second between the second and the third round was um, it felt very ideal to me going through this mock. So uh, we went with it. We went with the linebacker uh, pick 84. I managed to grab myself a tight end. Um, this is Hunter Long out of Boston College. He comes in at about the same size as Dallas Goddard. He's about 6'5". He's like 6'5", 255. Um, you know, he's not the fastest guy on the field. Um, his, his route running is decently sound. Um, he's got a good catch radius. He has good ball skills. And he's, and he's also an adequate blocker. So he... So to me, he sounds like he could be a good, like he could be a very good, um, you know, complimentary tight end to Dallas Goddard and really try and mold into that TE2 role. So um, I was confident in taking him as well. So that is the pick at 84. And we're going to move on here to pick 150. There is going to be some, there's going to be some picks in this mock that have carried over from my um, previous mocks because just in general that I am comfortable with um, staying with those players. Um, were they necessarily the best available? Probably not, but it's it's guys that it, it's guys that I still feel that can um, you know fill our needs um, good enough. Uh, unfort unfortunately in this mock I wasn't able to take a running back because I had uh, I had short-term memory to the fact that I took Eric Stokes in the second round um, and one of the picks ended up being a repeat pick because I, I feel that I feel that he's that diamond in the rough and that diamond in the rough player um, that I took in the Devonte Smith mock uh, mock so um, so this mock is going to consist of two corners, and, and I guess you can't go wrong. But um, at pick 150, I ended up going with an edge rusher in, Day, in Dalen Hayes. Um, he's got he's got a pretty good build. He comes in at six. He comes in at six three, about 260. Um, he's like six three, 260 range, something like that. Um, what I what I like about him is that he has he has a like a combination fit between being a defensive end and um, and some and some linebacker. So he was kind of giving me. He was kind of um, you know based on the analysis. He was kind of giving me vibes of you know what we're trying to um, do with Jannard Avery. How when we got him from the Cleveland Browns in in that exchange, um, you know Cleveland. Cleveland used him as, um, you know, kind of a hybrid player, be, um, primarily linebacker to defensive end. But we decided, um, we decided at that point that we wanted to go full defensive end, and it just it, it ended up not working, not only in the Eagles' favor but in our favor. So I like that Jonathan Gannon has switched him back to linebacker. I want to see, I want to see what he can do. Um, um, I want to know um, which linebacker spot that he's that he's going to play. Um, with his size, with his size, he might play. He might play the Sam. I don't know. He, um, but 
we'll just have to wait and see. But that was part of my influence in taking Dalen Hayes at 150. So um, 156 is a repeat pick from previous mocks in Embry Thomas. This is the corner from Michigan that I uh, said that I felt that could be a diamond in the rough. Um, I believe he was a four-star recruit coming from high school, and uh, he showed quite a lot of promise when he played for the Wolverines until he opted out in 2020. So that's my that's my diamond in the rough pick that's still similar. At 189, uh, another similar pick in uh, Robert Jones, the, the um, interior lineman from Middle Tennessee. Um, I think I think if I remember correctly, he has the he has the um, that similar kind of Brandon Brooks build to him. So um, good developmental piece to help in our rotation of uh, linemen to um, you know just to try and work some of the bugs out. And then for the last two here at 224, I found a um, I found a tackle on the on the uh, taller side that kind of has a similar build to Lane Johnson. So I ended up taking him as a developmental piece, Alar Jackson out of Iowa. And then, um, oh, I lied with the pick. <laughs> I lied with the picks. I've done so many already. So um, at 225, I ended up taking my defensive tackle, um, Carlo Kemp out of Michigan. He, um, the thing, the thing with him is that in order to get him up to snuff for the NFL, um, he's a little under, he's a little undersized. He would need to bulk up a bit. He comes in at 6'3", like 285, 286. Um, he would need to put on some pounds if he's going to stay at defensive tackle. Um, you know, he's, he's very good. He's very good at stop. He's very good at stopping the run, but you know, if like we have to, we have to look at, you know, how, uh, Fletcher Cox plays for us and how many double teams that he attracts. So, um, you have to, you have to go into this with kind of the same mentality when it comes to, um, our pass rush on the defensive line. So, Another good developmental piece at 225, and um, I think it'll. I, don't th I think it would be a good idea. So, 234, another repeat pick. Um, I went over this, and uh, either the, I think this was the Devonte Smith mock. I ended up taking Felipe Franks just because, you know, like I said, as we all know, uh, Howie Roseman and Jeffrey Lurie, they're, you know, they're they love their quarterbacks. They always want to take one. In every draft, and um, you know he, for you know for the owner and the GM, he's the prototypical size. You know, over he's six foot five or over, around two 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 twenty five to two hundred and forty pounds, um, big arm. So, um, and he ended up being the repeat pick. And then the last pick of the draft ends up being another repeat. He's a safety from Florida, and Sean Davis in. Um, I explained in a previous mock that I really liked him as far as development goes because of of his ideal fit in cover two defenses, and uh, I I think that he would be um, the type of addition that Jonathan Gannon would like to work with. So uh, that's going to that's going to do it for this mock. Um, I I hope that this Jamar Chase one did not disappoint. Again, um, I. Th I think, in my opinion, this is going to be um, my favorite mock so far. Um, just as far as being able to hit on the immediate needs that the Eagles are looking for, and I feel that you know that these players are going to um, satisfy that need for um, for quite a while until we get this until we get this cap situation figured out, and as and, and as far as um, just how successful um, Nick Sirianni can be in years to come. So that's going to do it for this episode of my mock drafts. Um, I know I wanted to go a little quicker. Um, it <laughs> didn't necessarily happen. It looks like I'm at the, I'm just under 15 minutes. Uh, I guess that's okay. So um, I'll end it here. Um, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate all the support. One sub away from 50, halfway to 100. It's it's a it's a it's an amazing feeling to um, to be able to do what I do and you know just and just 
have the uh, you know just have the modest support that I have so far. And uh, again, thanks to everybody that is you know that is subbed into the beginning of this journey that you're taking with me, taking with me with the channel. So um, thanks again. Uh, I'll see you later, guys. This has been Lindy Enzo. I'm signing off, and I'll catch you in the next one.